Ahoy hoy and welcome to the video. Today we're going to read a tale by Ethigun called In Response to Nuclear Warheads. And it is a tale about the Foundation's use of nuclear warheads, actually. Which, as you can imagine, might be a bit complicated. Let's get started. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Director Weld, and this is the fourth time that I speak to the committee. I come to you today to propose the abolition of all on-site explosives, especially regarding those of nuclear nature. As you are all well aware, the Foundation's history with nuclear warheads is a long one. We used them since, well, since they were invented, the time of wars. We did our best to stay out of all these wars, and yet we couldn't help but use the greatest creation for ourselves. And what did we use it for? Threaten our own staff. Nuclear warheads soon became the new method to easily resolve major security breaches. Not a normal bomb, mind you. An atomic bomb. Unfortunately, it took years of hindsight to realize that these warheads contaminate a site with atomic radiation for the next billion years. And do you know what can still thrive in that radioactivity? Anomalies. Well, some of them. But I don't have to tell you that some are too much in our line of work. I wasn't there when the disaster of Site-21 happened, one of the biggest Keter breaches in our history, followed by the on-call of five of our best task forces. What stopped them? Not the Keter, they had it almost in check. What stopped them was the premature decision of someone at that site that it would be time to bring out the last resort and blow everything up. Now, we've got a focal point of anomalies that control a still-functioning site and no human can contain them because they die if they enter. And I know at most sites we don't use nuclear warheads anymore, but that's not because of the things I just said. They are only out of use because of the veil breaking that these explosions cause. After all, it's difficult to hide a radioactive cloud that travels through multiple continents before dissolving. At least the new explosives can remove a site without making a single sound, and don't leave a huge, never-to-be-used-again crater. Incidentally, locations in more remote areas are still dependent upon atomic bombs. But you know what really bothered me about Site-21? It's not a, the radioactivity it spread, or the abominations it now houses. It's the fact that we lost five of our best task forces to that explosion. Five task forces we could have needed that year. Five task forces filled with young enthusiasts who could have served the Foundation for a whole lifetime. And if those soldiers were still alive, they could have prevented a lot more of the last resorts that we had to use. Now, since I'm speaking to the Ethics Committee here, I also want to note that knowing that you are working under the watchful eye of a bomb that could explode any minute does not help your productivity. I also honestly never understood the argument that these explosives are our best bets against raids. Is it not the point of stopping a raid to not lose the objects and people we're housing? And surely a raid was never that extreme that it would be worth it to eradicate all personnel and other anomalies with them. Now tell me, who here knows one anomaly that breached containment that could have been neutralized by a nuke? Yeah, not that surprising. Now tell me again, which of those couldn't have been neutralized by a gunshot at the right time? I thought as much. Now if you don't take anything else away from today, at least promise me this. That you will stand against the Council's decision to arm my department and other Foundation fronts with on-site explosives. I don't think the explained anomalies I house are a danger to anyone, and while the Foundation may not publicly exist, we fronts will take consequences. We have many good soldiers who train their entire life to prevent breaches. Triggering a bomb is just the easy way out, and a dishonor to their jobs. We don't have to die in the dark. Thank you for your time. While the Council appreciates Director Weld's ongoing worry for staff, this motion cannot pass. What is clearly missing from this proposal to be truly worth considering is an alternative. If I understood Weld correctly, his alternative to the current solution is, we must be better. And while that certainly is a goal to gravitate towards, it is not always obtainable. After all, we're only human beings, and there is only so much we can do. Then what, exactly, do we need to expect if these human efforts are not enough? Do we just accept that the last breach will cause a K-class scenario? Shouldn't we have done everything in our power to prevent that, even including that last resort? 
I do want to give a bit of perspective on these last resorts. In the last 50 years, all in all, four sites decided there was no other option. And while we are aware that 21 was a tragedy, stricter controls were implemented afterwards for all sites, those other three incidents, in the end, saved humanity. However, Weld is right about one thing. Atomic bombs are extremely ineffective compared to more modern explosive devices. And as such, all sites still dependent upon atomic bombs will have them replaced. That motion will pass. The general proposal is denied by the Council. I will not go into the psychological effects of the awareness of on-site explosives. If this is a problem, it is the duty of the Ethics Committee to find a solution. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Sinjariki, who has pledged at $100. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Thursday.